Welcome to my video about shimming. As I got more and more questions related to shimming, I decided to create this video and provide some more insights into this topic. To be in the position to explain shimming in the context of foiling, I will start with a quick recap about the lift force, explain the angle of attack, explain the different backwing assemblies, and then explain the effect of adding a shim and what a negative and positive shim is. To understand the effects of adding a shim, let us have a quick repetition about the lift force. When we move the foil through the water, the foil generates a lift. Focusing here on the front wing of the foil setup, we have four forces we have to consider. We have the lift force created by the wing due to its shape and its relative speed against the water. Then we have the weight force, basically the force of the equipment and the foiler. This force is acting in opposite direction to the lift force. Also, we have a drag force, the resistance of the foil in the water, which acts against the propulsion force generated by the foiler. Let us now focus on the lift force and what the lift force is dependent on. The lift force is dependent on the density of the water, the velocity of the foil against the water, the area of the wing and the lift coefficient. Looking at the formula, we can conclude that the lift force is increasing in case of higher density of the water, more speed, bigger area of the wing or a bigger lift coefficient. As long as you are using the same equipment, you will have the same area of the wing, more or less the same density of the water and without changing your foiling style, you will also have the same speed. Therefore, let us now look at the lift coefficient and how the lift coefficient can be changed. The lift coefficient depends on the geometry of the foil and the angle at which the foil meets the oncoming medium. The angle at which the oncoming medium is also called the angle of attack. In a simplified way, we can state that the bigger the angle of attack, the bigger will be the lift coefficient. Well, that is not completely true because once we reach a certain angle of attack, the flow behavior abruptly changes. When we plot the angle of attack against the lift coefficient at the constant speed, we can see that at a certain level, the angle becomes too big, which results in a stall. To explain shimming, do not let us go more into details at which point we exactly reach the critical angle of attack. However, what we have to understand and be aware of is that the angle of attack is having an influence on the lift force and therefore is relevant for us when talking about shimming. Actually, you can apply a shim to the front or the back wing. However, most of the time shimming is applied to the back wing. Therefore, I will in the upcoming explanations focus on the back wing shimming. As you most probably know, the back wing has several functions. It provides stability and therefore is also often called stabilizer, provides control, counteracts the lift of the front wing and also damps the pitching moment of the foil. Looking at the forces acting in our setup, we know that the front wing generates a force pointing upwards, the so-called lift force. The back wing generates a force pointing downwards and the rider generates a force pointing downwards as well. In my video about the importance of the body position and weight distribution when pump foiling, I explained in detail the forces and moments acting in this setup. From there we know that the momentum theorem, as well as the sum of the forces is also valid for pump foiling. So what happens now if we add a shim? By inserting a shim between the fuselage and the back wing, we change the angle of attack of the back wing and we stat the lift of the back wing. Due to the change of the force of the back wing, the resulting momentum along the pitch axis is therefore changed. With this basic knowledge about how the force created by wing can be changed, we will now look into shimming in more detail. Looking up shimming in the internet, you will sooner or later get confronted with the fact that there are different ways how foiling setups are assembled. Although they all look similar, there are some specifics. What is relevant for us in the context of shimming of the back wing is how the back wing is mounted on the fuselage. In some setups, the back wing is mounted on top of the fuselage. In addition to that, some setups also use the so-called angle adapter between the fuselage and the back wing. However, there are also setups where the back wing is mounted underneath the fuselage. Also some of those setups are assembled with an angle adapter. When you plan to do a shimming on your foil, 
you must pay attention how your setup is assembled so that you will get the targeted result by adding a shim. A shim is basically a wedge that you put in between the fuselage and the wing. So you will have to remove the wing and place the shim in between the back wing and the fuselage. Due to the shape of the shim, please note that there are positive and negative shims, we will look into that later, the angle in that the wing is mounted on the fuselage will change. In the following example, we are using a negative shim and as you can see, the trailing edge of the wing is now pointing more upwards after adding a shim. If we bring that now back into the, let me say, a little bit more technical view, we can see the effect of having added the shim. Having added the shim has increased the angle of attack of the back wing. That results in a bigger force generated by the back wing and with that also in a bigger momentum induced by the force of the back wing. Due to that change in the momentum, the foiler will feel more lift in front of the board. As we can see, adding a shim between the fuselage and the back wing has an influence on the overall system. Depending on in which direction you want to trim your setup, you can make use of negative or positive shims with different angles. As there is quite often a confusion between positive and negative shims, I put together a small overview that should help you to choose the correct shim. As mentioned earlier, the first thing we have to distinguish is if the back wing is mounted underneath or on top of the fuselage. When you move the trailing edge of the back wing higher, that will result in more drag, more lift, more pitch stability, less glide and a stiffer turning. You will have to choose a so-called negative shim in case the back wing is mounted underneath the fuselage and a so-called positive shim in case the back wing is mounted on top of the fuselage. In case you want to move the trailing edge down to have a flatter position back wing, that will result in less drag, less lift, less stability, more glide and a looser feeling. You have to choose a positive shim in case the back wing is mounted underneath the fuselage and a negative shim in case the back wing is mounted on top of the fuselage. Please note that the illustrations here are used to indicate the direction and are exaggerated. Not all setups have in the so-called neutral position, the position without the shim, the same angle and therefore the shim is always changing to a new angle from the position without the shim which does not have to be zero. When I explained the different assembly types, I also mentioned that some brands are using angle adapters between the fuselage and the back wing. For sure, also for those setups you can work with shims. However, many of the brands who designed the setup with an angle adapter also offer angle adapters with different angles. So, in many cases you can just replace the angle adapter with a different angle instead of having a shim. I hope that with this video I could bring in some more light into the topic of shimming. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and if you want to donate a coffee, please find the link to do so in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and wish you a happy pumping.